get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, RX Bars, Quest Nutrition, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 creates 100% outsourced VIP special events for software companies or conference organizers. So if your company sees the value of bringing your highest level customers together, to connect and collaborate, learn more. You can find out if your community qualifies at rise25.com. Uh, today's episode is also brought to you by Brand Driver, and Brand Driver helps e commerce brands grow online sales. They help you to protect your brand. I did a demo with them actually, and I loved how the dashboard creates visibility so you can see all your views and questions that you need answering on one screen. They, big companies use it, but they have small company pricing. So check out branddriver.com. And today I'm very excited. I had to coax a little bit. Um, I love the product, by the way, K Plus Organics. Today we have the co-founder of K Plus Organics, Valana Cologne, who is on a mission to change the way kids hydrate. And, and Valana, I'm always looking for, you know, playing sports. What is the best thing that I should be, you know, taking in and what my kids can be taking in? So. She created K Plus Organic Sports Drink with young athletes in mind because it's made with natural flavors and coloring. It contains only natural and organic sweeteners. I was telling before we started that it's just sweet enough, but not too sweet, which I love about it. And Lana and her founding partner, Savannah James, our mom is on a mission to give kids a better option for sports drinks. And she was a college athlete and was always aware of the impact of nutrition. But after having three children, her interest in healthy food for busy families became a personal passion. And Savannah James is a successful businesswoman and she knows hydration all too well, having front row seats with her three kids participating in athletics, as well as her husband, LeBron James, and together they run K Plus Organics. Valena, thanks for joining me. Hi. I'm excited to chat. I want to go back. You know, originally I was going to ask about your college tennis days because there's a certain mindset, I think, with an athlete in competition that carries over to business. So talk about Division I tennis. What was it? What was the competition like then? And, and what, what did you do to prepare um, mindset wise? Well, D1 tennis is uh, no joke. You know, it starts from a really young age preparing for it, not just playing D1. You start playing when you're little. So I actually started playing when I was almost 12, which is actually pretty late consider, you know, to be able to be picked up and play D1. Yeah. So lots of hard work that goes into just being able to even get there. Um, uh, but it was something that I really wanted to do. I guess I was pretty driven without really thinking about it. Um, and pretty competitive by nature, but it was also really fun. It's a great outlet for kids to have a sport like that, um, and to have something to really focus on, um, aside from just, you know, trying to do well in school. But, um, once I got curious with athletics, you know, um, the, they say, you know, the higher you get up, the talent is extraordinary. You know, people are very talented and there's a mindset you know, that goes into it. Is there anything, you know, you were preparing obviously physically. How did you prepare with your mind uh, when you're going to these competitive matches in D1? It's tough, you know, um, lots of quiet moments before your matches and um, teammates kind of giving you pep talks. But I just try to get into this kind of quiet zone place. Um, you're playing singles or doubles, so it's on you or your teammate. It's not like you're playing with a huge team either. So, Tennis is a little, um, I feel like is especially tough yep. because if you lose, it's your fault. It's nobody else's fault, right? You can't point the finger. No, Maybe I'm can't. a ref, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in tennis, you call your own lines, too. There's no refs. Mm. I mean, they walk around. They try to help a little bit, at least when I was there. This was a long time ago. But, um, you know, you were calling your own lines. But um, it's tough. You have to, you have to, you know, you're down 
you know, love 40, you got to try to pull yourself yeah, right. out of that hole that you've just dug. Right. Um, and you have to kind of, you know, not get down on yourself. And it's really tough. And it's pretty challenging. But I, you know, I did my best. Um, we worked with some coaches on mental toughness as well. Um, but repetition and just trying to, to work through those tough moments. When you're down love 40, and I know you had no idea this is where the conversation was going, but if you're down love 40, what do you say in your mind to, so you don't psych yourself out? Was there anything yeah. that you'd repeat or what would you do in that moment so that, because you could just, it's momentum, right? So I'm curious. Yeah, it is momentum. Well, you try to not tell yourself anything negative, mm -hmm. for sure. So you just try to be, you know, point by point. Um, and try to think about what you're going to do. You're trying to think about whoever you're playing and their strengths and their weaknesses in that moment. Um, and just trying, trying to not make a mistake too, an easy mistake, you know? Mm -hmm. um, One of the inspirations I know for, I mean, I could see how mindset taking into division one sports into running the business. Um, but also your grandfather was an inspiration. Yeah. What was your grandfather like? Um, he, it's funny, I'm a lot like him. He's very quiet. He didn't really say much. Um, but I think when he did, people listened. Um, he was, you know, dropped out of school when he was, I think in eighth grade, I would say, mm. um, to help his, help his family work. Um, obviously he was born in 1919. There was depression going on. And, um, he just started working from the time he was little and, um, his family had some movie theaters and he started working at the movie theaters and the concession stands and helping crank the machine and um, started started doing that. And he eventually, you know, worked his way up and had over 360 screens wow. by the time in, in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, um, by the time he ended up selling. And he's uh, since then, they, they ended up selling twice. He sold to Act 3 and then he sold to Regal Theaters. So, um, which was a smart move because he knew he was going to probably get, you know, run over by some bigger companies. So, but I did, you know, see him, you know, work really hard. My mom worked really hard. My, you know, their whole family did. They worked, you know, the drive-ins. They made sure that you people do were everything, right? in. They were checking people's trunks or, and, um, <laughs> it was really, you know, a family business. Um, but he ended up selling those in the late eighties, um, and made a smart decision to keep all the land mm -hmm. that the movie theaters were built on. And then that kind of sparked his, uh, interest to start a real estate company. Oh. So he moved from the movie industry to, you know, real estate and he, you know, has, has contributed quite a bit to, um, you know, that the development in Portland, Oregon. So What's he died your about years ago but I do Sorry, remember him uh, you know working really hard also not caring about you know resoling his shoes even as a you know as a, an, a 90 year old man who could definitely afford you know a new pair of shoes you know resoling those shoes we'd have to buy him you know a nice coat and of course he would buy everybody dinner but he would never buy anybody you know he would never buy anything nice for himself so i think just seeing that that hard work and um we talked a lot about school he made sure that you know i said he said i want you guys to all get a really good education i never had one um but those were clearly different times education's um a lot more important right now but um so i think i feel like i get a lot of that from him, just seeing how hard he worked and how things don't come to, you, to come easily, you have to work for them. So, what was the favorite story that yeah. he told to you? That you remember? Pardon? What was your favorite story? One of the favorite stories he told to you? Uh, there's so many. You know, he was a boxer too. He was an amateur boxer and mm. fought Sugar Ray Robinson. Really? Um, yeah. Holy cow. Um, it was his last fight before Sugar Ray went pro. And, um, he turned pro. So, um, then the, the, the war broke out and my grandfather actually, my grandfather actually took his spot on the Olympic team. Um, cause Sugar Ray turned pro and then, um, so he, he took his spot and then war broke out. So they all got drafted. So they never went, but lots of war stories, you know, of bullets grazing his behind. Um, glad, glad one didn't hit him. Um, and 
just my favorite memory actually of my grandfather is when he he really taught me the value of money from a young age. He, we would recycle soda cans, pop cans, as we say in Oregon. I don't know if you say that in Chicago. Pop in Chicago, pop, yes. Okay. Yes. So we would, you know, recycle cans together. They would stack up really high, and then we would make a Sunday trip to the local Fred Meyer where there was a machine where you could, you know, dump in all your cans, and it would spit out, like, 20 bucks, 5 bucks, 7 bucks, whatever it was. And, you know, he actually started a, a savings account for me with that money where mm. we go on Sundays until it got up to about $1,000. Um, and then he invested that $1,000 for me in some stock and it ended up growing um, and making a lot of money. But so those Sundays were really were really memorable for me when we would, you know, drive to to do that. Of course, he would buy me an ice cream on the way home. That's all that matters. And we wouldn't talk to each other. It was great because he was quiet and I was quiet and was just like <laughs> us just sitting in the car together. It was great. Just being there. Yeah. Um, do you remember any advice that he's given you that's been impactful business-wise? I mean, I think, I think just, you know, getting an education. He always said that was really important. He always said that for him it was hard work and common sense because he didn't have an education. Um, so he really got far by, you know, being a visionary, looking to the future, um, thinking about what people were going to want in the future. Um, but he always told me just to work hard and nothing's ever going to get handed to you. Yeah. And with him, he obviously taught you a lot and the value of a dollar and, you know, a lot of inspiration comes from just probably just observing the way yeah. he is. Um, what about with your kids? What do you do with them? Because obviously you have this entrepreneurial spirit that's almost passed down a bit what do you do yeah. with them to get them involved in the business and, and what you're doing they help with everything but I I make sure that I tell them we talk about failing and how important it is to fail because hmm. um, I fail every day like oh. literally every day I'm failing with something and I'm having to figure out you know my back's up against a wall and I'm trying to figure out how to get out of situations so um I just make sure we talk about failing a lot, um, and it's important for them to know that it's okay for them to fail in school, um, them to fail in sports, and that's how you learn, and that's how you get better, and you wouldn't get anywhere if you didn't fail. Totally. So. Yeah, it's sort of like that 40 love situation, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's tough. You know, is there anything... Uh, that you do around the dinner table or is it just something that you talk about um, about failing you know because in I get it you get it and sometimes if you're you don't know eight nine ten that like you just don't want to fail you know so. yeah. but that's why I think it's important to talk to them about it we do talk about it at dinner I ask them what they failed at today hmm. you know, or we do it at carpool pickup when I'm picking them up so you celebrate um, it almost. Yeah, we celebrate it yeah. because I think it's important for them to know that, you know, my daughter especially is like a perfectionist and she comes home like, where's my math test? I want to see it. And where's my report card? And she gets very, very upset. So I have yeah. to, um, you know, really reiterate with her that it's okay to fail. Totally. So. Um, the I want to talk about the journey of K Plus Organics and the creation of it. Because from what I read, it took over two years to make it, and you did a lot of research and testing. Um, what did the first version look like in your kitchen? You created this in your kitchen, right, the first version? I did. We started playing around with, like, coconut water and honey and agave and, like, different flavors and juice concentrates. And, you know, I added, like, pomegranate juice just to see if I could flavor it, just with things that were easily available. Um and my kids loved it, and it was healthier, um, but I don't have time to sit there and make sports drinks, you know, <laughs> all the time um, in my house, but it started out that way, and the kids loved it, so I thought, geez, there's something here. We should go, you know, hire a food lab and see, see what we can do, so we kind of did the same thing. I gave the food lab some some parameters. Of course, I wanted it to be organic certified. Um, we wanted it to be low in sugar. 
We wanted it to have, you know, high quality ingredients that were going to be beneficial. We wanted vitamin C, we wanted potassium, we wanted um, a good source of, you know, purified sea salt, um, all better quality ingredients um, that kind of delivered the same thing that the typical or the, I guess the well-known sports drinks deliver that we all know, uh, you know, that have been around for so many years and probably grew up drinking, but um, can also have pretty, you I know, drinking one of the worst things ever. I can't believe my parents let me drink that stuff. I was like, I just pop. Mom and dad, I love you. And, my, and, they, <laughs> and they fed me, I mean, they, they served pretty healthy foods, but when it came to the drinks, I swear, I think I had like three cans of Mountain Dew and that was like normal when I oh was out God. playing basketball or whatever the case is, so. Yeah, but it's like, we know we know better now. You know, I feel like, I, I love my parents too, but like, we, I feel like we didn't have the research back right. then or else they probably, hopefully, wouldn't have let us do that. Um, but, you know, I grew up doing the same stuff. So, and yeah. it's it's not good for you. And I, it probably now that you have that out of your system and you're not doing that anymore, you probably realize, oh, I don't, you know, those sugar crashes that would come after. Right. You know, not so helpful on the basketball court. What advice did you get with the, you know, oftentimes when you go up against um, larger companies or processes that have been there for a long time, there hasn't been much innovation there, you get the same advice from even the people you're handing off your, your ideas to. So what were some of the, uh, I guess, advice you were getting for, as you were working through this process for two years to come to what the product is now? Well, I mean, people were like, when I would tell people about it, they would say, geez, why, why isn't there something great like that out right now? Why is it taken until now? Um, so, so really, I mostly got you know positive reinforcement, like, keep going. We need to get this on the market. Um, and when, it's interesting when I'm in like the right place, a sports field with full of moms and dads and people are like, this is amazing. Um, you know, we can't wait for it to be all over the place and more readily available. So pe the market's ready for something like this and people are excited about it. How'd so. you come to the flavors? I know you just launched a new one, right? Yeah. Savannah launched her own lemonade and Savannah's flavor, you know, obviously was developed by her and, and, you know, together and she really loves lemonade and their, their family loves lemonade, but they don't like all the sugar and the calories that come with that lemonade. So she just thought, geez, I should just, we should make a lemonade. And it, it, it you know, it's been a pretty big hit. I think it's, it's probably selling the best right now, actually. Mm. Um, maybe it's summertime. I don't know. But summertime helps. It I'm seems sure. to be a hit. Yeah. But we right now we have a lime, we have an orange, a fruit punch, and then Savannah's lemonade that she's launched. So why'd you choose those we're three? Launching, we're launching a smaller little ten ounce size that is hmm. great for younger kids, five and six year olds, sevens. So how'd you come to those start with those three? Why lime, orange, and fruit punch? You know, that was just based off of market research. Hmm. Uh, if you look at statistics, the limes and the oranges sell the best. So we started with those two. And then, of course, you know, we kind of accidentally made this fruit punch. It was not, it was, we had a berry as well. And the fruit punch happened on accident. We were just kind of fooling around with the lab and, and um, it was, it was a hit. So, of course, it made sense to launch um, the fruit punch first. And since we're focused on kids, we wanted to have kid, you know, kid friendly flavors. Um, so, anyway, that's where we started. So, what's the decision to come out with a certain size? You mentioned now you're going to come out with a smaller size. How do you decide on right now? I think it's 16.9 ounces, right? Is the size yeah. now? How do you decide on that? Yeah, we just we just thought it was you know after doing some focus groups and whatnot, we just decided that the sixteen point nine versus a twenty was a better size for our kids. Um, and then obviously the sixteen point nine is way too big for you know for a, a fifteen you know fifteen year olds good for the sixteen point nine, but you know they want to drink more than a, a ten ounce. So, um, but little kids do not need more than than a little ten ounce bottle. So. What kind of team do you assemble to do something like this? It sounds like you have some researchers, you have some food scientists, yourself. Who else do you need to, to make this mission a possibility? 
to make the whole mission or yeah. just develop a drink? For both, yeah. Both? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely have lots of people helping us. I've got an integrative nutritionist. I have um, basic nutritionists. We have, we um, partnered with this girl named Michelle Lovett, who's amazing. She has like, I, I mean, I can't even count the degrees she has. There's so many. Um, and she loves it. Um, I was definitely, she's been involved from the beginning. I would run samples to her and she would say, this is good. This is not good. You know, change this, change that. Um, so definitely lots of people, um, helping lots of sports dietitians as well. Um, and research, they've all helped. And then we're basically for the first couple of years, it was just me, you know, really, you know, wrapping this thing or uh, wrapping my arms around it and just trying to get it here. Um, and it's just only until probably the last year we've hired a CFO, um, and, uh, now have a marketing manager, but our team is not super deep. It's just uh, a handful of probably five people that are helping. Um, but we definitely need to, to bring in some more people to kind of help push this out. Totally. I was reading, um, there was an article, and, and you had said, it's one of the most difficult mountains I've climbed. Yeah. What's been a difficult part of it? I mean, everything, it all seems difficult. Everything. Yeah. It's just so much work, um, and I'm involved in every single piece of the business. So um, it's just, it's it's been so much work. But I do remember my grandfather, in these moments where it's tough, I try to to remember him and think about how hard he worked and, and what he would say to me, you know? So. Yeah. Um, where can people find it? Right now it's on Amazon, which is, you know, super easy to grab. You just go in and, and Google or not Google, you go into Amazon and type in K plus organic sports drink. Okay. Um, and then we're on our website, K plus organics.com. And in California and Oregon, we're in a handful of stores. I believe we're in about 45 stores now. Um, but um, hopefully we'll have some some uh, bigger push out later at the end of this year. Yeah, because I met um, your team, some of your team at the Kehi uh, show in Chicago, and so you guys are getting out there. Yeah, we're definitely getting out there. It's just the sales take a while to happen. They, the stores have resets, and you have to present at a certain time, and so we're we're working on it for sure. Yeah, um, and you know, for you, I wanted to find out. You know, being a mom uh, of three kids and having a family, how do you balance your time? Like, what does your week look like between kids, activities, family, business? You know what I have? It's, it's interesting. I have come to realize that at this juncture in my life, there is no balance. And there is just not going to be any balance um, for a while. Um, I try to, you know, go to bed early. I try to wake up early. I try to get on email at like 4.30 or 5 a.m. just mm. to catch up. Um, try to get a workout in at the gym, get home, feed my kids breakfast. Um, right now it's summer, so, you know, we're, we they kind of get up and hang out slowly. Um, so we're doing a camp here or there. We've been to Aspen this summer. We've been to Portland to do some press. Um, we were just in Las Vegas this weekend, but um, mostly we're just kind of at home hanging out kind of with the kids, so. Yeah, it's busy life. It's definitely busy. There's never a dull moment. And then trying to cook, you know, and I am I love cooking and I love, you know, making sure I'm providing good, healthy meals for my family. So that's also an added challenge when you're super busy, so. Who do you want to, who do you want to get this in the hands of? Like where should where do you want this? Any stores or people that should be trying K plus organics? Well, I want to get it. I mean, I want it to be nationwide soon. Hopefully, um, we're working on it. It's just it's just slow. We're going to start probably on the West Coast, and then hopefully by the end of mid to end of next year, we should be you know have national distribution. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah, you're like Nike. You start in Oregon and then just yep. branch out across the world. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you know that we're partnering with Nike as well? I didn't know that. Yeah. So I actually, so I'm from Portland originally. So Nike, of course, you know, holds a very special place in my heart. Growing up, like you did not wear anything but Nike, you know. So um, I sent the drink to the head dietitian there 
and she loved it. Mm. And immediately within like five days, they called me and they said, we want this on campus. So we're actually partnering with them. Mm. Savannah and I fly up on August 15th to do a demo on the Nike headquarters. And they're gonna, we're going to be in uh, all of their fitness centers and their eateries um, available. Huge. Just. Yeah, Congratulations. it's huge. Yeah, it's great. We're really excited to partner with them. They're, you know, an amazing brand. And obviously, it's special to me being from Portland. So I felt when I listened to uh, Shoe Dog, the book, I don't know if you've, you've read it yet. It was, like, read that, yes. it was like therapy for entrepreneurs. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, I feel uh, very similar to how he did early on, you know. So. Well, how did you meet Savannah? You know, we were introduced um, by a mutual friend, and um, we shared the idea with her. And she's so, she's so cool, and she's so quiet and calm. I was like, you know, explaining the whole idea about Kate Plus and showing her samples, and she was so quiet it really freaked me out. It scared. Me. And at the end of the meeting, I just said, "So, you know, what do you think about all of this?" And we were talking and talking and talking at her, and. She's just quiet, sitting there, and she just said, she said, this is just amazing. She said, I don't know what to say. This thing, this is amazing. You know, it's genius. I wish I would have thought of it. Um, you know, I'm, I, would, I would love to help you guys and be a part of this. So That's she's great. a great person. She's really cool, too. So what else is on the horizon? So you said that Nike, you are coming out with a 10-ounce bottle. Mm -hmm. Any other flavors or things coming out with the... I can't tell you that okay that's all I can tell you okay uh, so the rest we is have... trade secret yes we have made a couple other flavors we're thinking about maybe pushing it out to our followers and maybe having them pick the next one hmm. um, of the ones that we have made you know that we want to push out um, and, and have tested <laughs> so I don't know we'll see um, but for right now just the 10 ounce um, and some, some really cool new partnerships for the end of the year. Nice. Well, I want to be the first one to thank you. This has been fantastic. And I, everyone should check out, you can go to kplusorganics.com or kplusdrink.com or just go on Amazon and get it. Um, Blana, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.